Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Fix. Today we're going to look at a photo that I took at Vermilion Lakes, which is near uh, the town of Banff. Um, Banff is tucked just around the corner in this photo. Uh, that's Rundle Mountain in the background there, and this is um, just the edge of Vermilion Lakes. So it's kind of a famous spot. Lots of people go there to catch the sunrise. It's easy to get to, and lots of different uh, locations to go to. Um, so I definitely wasn't the only one there on this particular morning. Um, it wasn't wasn't a fantastic sunrise by any means. There's lots of cloud and everything, but it still kind of came out with this eerie effect in the photo. And it, it was one of those mornings where you go out there um, and you set up and you're waiting for the sunrise and nothing really happens. Then all of a sudden it's it's an hour past when the sun was supposed to rise and you, you didn't see anything other than it got a little bit lighter. Um, so it's always disappointing, but you still take some photos anyways. Um, and this one, I kind of got home and didn't expect much and looked at a few of the photos and it ended up being actually kind of a cool photo. So it's um, just kind of has that moody feel to it. You can see a storm was kind of blowing in at the mountains here and it's um, uh, started to get quite uh, snowy soon after taking this photo actually. Um, so yeah, it ended up being ended up being a photo that I really liked and I um, was able to kind of pull it together in, in Lightroom and get uh, get something out of it anyways. Um, and it was a bit of a tricky one to edit, so I'll, I'll show you what I did. Um, nothing, nothing too strange or anything, a pretty basic edit, but I'll just show you the steps that I did, um, just like everything else that we do here on The Fix. Um, and if this is your first time here, what I do is I, I go through old photos that I've taken, um, old or new, um, photos that have been posted on my website, findawayphotography.com. Um, and I post a new photo every week and the fix is where I kind of take some time, go through those old photos and show you how, how I edit them from start to finish. Um, so that you can kind of, kind of take what you learn here and use it on your own photos. Um, so with that, we'll get started. Um, so this one you can see up here is taken, uh, the settings were ISO 200, um, 16 millimeter. Um, so I, I had my, I think it was my 10 to 18 millimeter lens on here, which is one of my favorite lenses, um, on my Sony a6000. Um, I had it set to f11 and 1 13th of a second. So I had it set up on a tripod. That is a pretty slow shutter speed. Um, yeah, and that's what we got. So, um, let's get into it. So what did it look like before? That's the big question. Um, so you can see before it was really, really dark. Um, not much really popping out, and that's why it kind of was quite disappointing. Um, there's not not much color, not um, yeah, not much to see at all really. But it is a really interesting photo. Um, there's kind of these cool foreground elements, the grass, um, the reflection in the lake. It was perfectly still that morning, so that was a bonus. Um, so there there is lots in the photo. It just wasn't wasn't a perfect sunrise. But with a bit of tweaking and editing in Lightroom, we were able to kind of pull out this reflection, um, make these clouds kind of pop, and uh, give give uh, give something to the photo anyways. So um, how do we do that? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to hit here. Um, I'm just going to go down and reset it back to scratch, and we'll take it from here. Um, first thing I always do is a bit of cropping. I like to go wide. Um, kind of gives it that widescreen TV effect, um, like the cinematic look. So I will pull in the bottom up to about where these reflections start, because that's going to be that's going to be kind of the key focus of this one is getting these reflections to pop, and then um, getting it to kind of pop up here as well, so that there's something leading your eye into the photo, into Rendell Mountain in the back. Um, gives that depth and interest to the photo and then we'll bring down this top as well something like that maybe um, I think that's about where the other one was and then uh, we'll just start with the editing so going down the basic panel um, we'll bump up the exposure it is a really dark photo so um, I won't go too much but uh, something like that maybe contrast uh, you can see from this one there's really just blacks and whites and a bunch of gray in between um, but we'll open that up just a little bit. Um, we'll kind of go, I don't know, something like there maybe. And then highlights will, hmm, what should we do? 
think we'll make that because we're aiming to make this pop a little bit so we'll bring up the highlights and get that to stand out a bit more and shadows um it's kind of counterintuitive but we'll i'm going to bring the shadows down because i think we'll be able to we'll be able to recover it recover that in a bit um actually looks quite a bit better lifting those shadows um so plan b we're going to lift the shadows we're going to bring this up quite a bit and yeah now we can start seeing the details in the grass along the edges of the lake and things like that so i think that's a lot better actually so maybe something like that um, and then we'll get that moody kind of dark color back by bringing the blacks down so whites first um plus 13 plus 15 something like that maybe just to kind of add a little bit of pop to the sky actually let's go a little more and then we'll bring the blacks down to counteract that yeah something like that maybe just to bring those deeper blacks into the into the sides and the edges and that sort of thing and then clarity i usually add a bit of clarity so we'll we'll see what that looks looks like and it does actually look really good in the in the reflection so yeah something like that and then vibrance as well there's not that much color but we will just bring a bit i usually don't like to go above 40 and in this one i think 40 is a little too much so we'll maybe something like that add just a bit touch of saturation as well um, i usually don't do much with the tone curve but today we will just to kind of fine tune where the light starts and um, everything in between sits um, so let's see um, some people you can you can kind of grab this line and just move it around like that or you can um, use these sliders which affects um, each individual part of the line by itself and if you're not familiar with it the way the tone curve works is you can see the histogram is overlaid in the back um, you can see kind of that light gray color there matching the histogram up here on the left hand side is kind of everything incoming from light to dark so light being here dark being here and this is the outgoing on this side so light to dark so before and after kind of kind of a way to think of it um, so as you can see if you pick any point on this so let's go three quarters up so this is the before follow it over to here to the line follow it down and it meets exactly the same point on the after. So that's because we haven't done anything with the tone curve. If we grab this and say drag it up, something like that, we've just changed it. So we've brightened up, the, up these highlights. So now we look here, go to the three quarter, follow it over. So what was before that kind of the three quarter mark, so in between, um, so pure um, black down here, pure white up here three quarters of the way between that follow that over to here and we follow that down so what was once before three quarters of the way between black and white is now closer to middle between black and white so hopefully that makes sense um, and that's kind of the way this tone co curve works so we'll kind of reset that bring it back to zero and what we're gonna do um, just kind of playing around, see what each of these does. I think brightening, brightening up those lights um, brings a bit of pop back into it. So let's see, just a bit there. Um, the darks, yeah, let's brighten those up as well. And you can see how it kind of, kind of brings that detail out in the water and that sort of thing. So I think that looks good. Um, and then the shadows, the very bottom of the tone curve. So I might have got it backwards originally, but basically darks down here up to lights darks down here up to lights um, so the bottom of that tone curve uh, let's see I think a bit of depth in the shadows will will bring that down just a little bit cool so that's tone curve um, not much to do here um, again there's not much color there's no greens there's no reds pretty much just all blue um, so we can play around with that a little bit um, I kind of like that cold blue color um, so we're going to leave it like that. Let's hop in here, do some sharpening. And this is kind of the basic procedure, so I'll just I'll just fly through this. Um, all my other 
the fix episodes. I, I think the first couple ones, especially, I go into this in a little bit more detail. So make sure you check those out if you're not familiar with how to do the how to do the sharpening. Uh, but in this one, I'll just kind of fly through this really quick. And then masking, find out what we actually want to sharpen. So everything white is being sharpened, everything black is being masked. Bit of noise reduction. There won't be too much noise, so I think that looks good. Excellent. Remove CA, why not? Um, yeah, we'll do that. Enable profile corrections, just to kind of flattens that photo out, I like it. And then we'll bring in those uh, murky corners again with a bit of vignetting. Easy. That is it. Um, last thing I always like to check is the temperature. Um, because it is such a moody photo, um, I think going back and exaggerating this a little bit and bringing the temperature down a bit would actually look kind of cool. Something like that and tint. Leave it like that. Cool. So hit Y. We'll see where we are before and after. You can see we've actually made a lot of progress. Um, comparing it to the very uh, the original photo though we don't have that pop in the reflection or the pop in the clouds so that's what we're going to do with local adjustments um, but as for now i think we made a good start for sure so um let's see starting with graduated filters we'll zero that thing out so just double clicking effect resets all of those and this part i think is kind of lost space so i'm going to close it in so i'm going to bring in some black and we'll just kind of darken that corner off so draws people's attention to the center rather than getting kind of lost in the in the murky just bring that in contrast yeah whatever it doesn't matter too much cool so taking care of that corner um, adds a bit of mood to the sky as well um what else do we want to do Let's see, I might add just a little bit of dark down here as well. Just a bit. And that same kind of thing, just to draw draw the eye in. So just a tiny bit, kind of getting that corner a little bit. Um, those moody corners again. And then let's make this pop. This is a pretty important part of the photo right here. So let's see what we can do to make that kind of stand out a bit. So a little bit of brightening, brightening it up. Um, I think opening up that contrast does a bit. Make those highlights pop. So bring down the shadows and lift that exposure. Yeah, so it's just kind of bringing a bit more attention to it without trying to overdo it. Perfect, so what does that look like? Without it and with it. Um, so it might be a little bit too much. We'll just bring that, this guy here, down a bit. Cool, something like that. So I think that looks good. I also really like this grass here. I think that's there's a lot of detail to be found in that. Um, I'm not going to do too much, but maybe brushing. Might brush in a little bit there. So we'll just kind of get started, get a little brush going, and see what we can do. Just going to brighten it up, bring down the contrast a bit, up the highlights. I don't want to make it look fake, so I don't want to do too much here, but. Um, just a bit. Some clarity in there might look good. And let's see, so we'll just brush that kind of a little bit more where we want it. Something like that. Cool. And we'll just chuck a bit over here while we're at it. Spread the love around a bit. Cool, so something like that. Um, I'm just gonna bring that down a bit just so we make sure that we don't overdo it and bring those shadows down a bit. Cool, so 
it's all about finding that kind of happy medium and I think that looks good um, let's see so without it and with it it's making it pop a little bit and then while I'm at it I'm gonna darken this corner I think that kind of the same thing as everything else that we've been doing here just bringing that eye into the middle and kind of leading it where you want and that kind of gives a bit of a bit of an artistic effect to it I guess you'd say cool hit Y see how we're going so definitely making some progress um, I think that I'm pretty happy with the way it looks down here we still have those dark shadows lots of pop in the middle um, let's see let's chuck one right in here something like that bring up the bring up the exposure just a bit so you know the drill now just making that making that um, reflection look as good as we can cool I like it and a little bit of work up here I think a radio filter would be able to cover that nice um, chuck it on there like a big band-aid actually had a preset before that I had made called detail in the sky let's see how that does yeah don't like that a little bit too a little bit too much so we'll kind of do a custom thing here so bring the exposure down just a bit contrast yeah contrast up highlights up shadows shadows down maybe a bit of pop out of that a bit of clarity and saturation don't think we actually want to saturate that I might desaturate it just a bit cool so so just looking at this one you can see it kind of brings a bit more pop into there and then same thing down here just looking at the water yeah I think we've got an extra kind of lighting it up a bit some more details in there perfect so that's before this is after with just the radio filters this is before and after with the graduated filters so before and then you'll see we just kind of close those corners and the edges in just like that and then a bit of brushing on the grass before and after perfect so that's it So we'll close this, we'll close the brushing down. Now you can see here, if we go full screen, you can see this is the after photo. Um, so we've kind of made that reflection, pulled that out of the water, made it pop, made the clouds look cool, um, brought in the shadows around the corners to kind of keep that moodiness and made sure that we kept the whole color, color of the photo kind of blue to make sure we had that kind of kind of cold uh, moody feeling to it um, before and after dark this one's lighting up with lots of pop so that's kind of that was kind of the goal of the photo um, so that's it we'll take one last look at it full screen and that's it for this week's episode so we'll we'll see you on the next one thanks <laughs>